Hello students, in this video we'll prove Schur's Lemma. So what's Schur's Lemma or Schur's Theorem? It says if M is a connected isotropic manifold with n bigger than or equal to 3, so this would be at least a three-dimensional manifold, then the covariant derivative of the sectional curvature is equal to zero. Okay? In other words, it's a constant sectional curvature, right? And isotropic means what? So isotropic means the following. So isotropic means that it doesn't, the Riemann curvature does not depend on the choice of planes. It doesn't depend on the, the section of plane you get. So isotropic, isotropic, if and only if R of I, J, K, L is equal to the sectional curvature times G, I, K, G, J, L minus G, I, L, G, J, K. And there's no, there's no, um, explicit dependent on the choice of covariant vectors here, right? So in other words, k is equal to k of ai and bi for every ai bi covariant vector we choose, right? Independent of the choice of covariant vectors. Great. All right, so now I need a couple of different things over here to prove this. So let's the proof goes as follows. So proof, let's recall the differential Bianchi identity. So differential Bianchi, implies that the m derivative, m covariant derivative of r of i, j, k, l, plus the k covariant derivative of r, i, and then l, m, plus the, what's left, I have an l derivative to do, so I have an l derivative of r of i, j, m, k is equal to zero. So let's apply this differential Bianchi identity to both sides of this equation over here, right? So if I take this isotropic equation over here and I differentiate it with respect to m, k, and l, what will we get? So let's do it. And of course, I'm going to use the fact that the, the covariant derivative of the metric tensor is going to be equal to zero, right? So if I'm putting derivatives on these metric tensors over here, the covariant derivative of those are zero. So I'm doing, you might say, well, wow, there's a lot of product rules to do over here, right? I do the covariant derivative of this times this times this. I have to do the covariant derivative, then I have to do k times the covariant derivative of g i k, but that's going to be equal to zero because the fact the covariant derivative of the metric is always zero. Good. By compatibility. All right. So now let me plug this in over here. So if I do this over here, this will give me, this implies that the m covariant derivative of k times g i k g j l and then minus g i l g i l g j k. And then I'm going to have the next one over here is going to be a k derivative, little k, of the sectional curvature, right? And then what's left over over here, so now the order's off, so I have i, j, l, m. So I have i, j, l, m, so what's going to, what am I going to put over here? I'm going to put a g, i, l, g, j, m, minus g, i, m, g, j, l. And then finally, I'm going to have a what? An l covariant derivative of the sectional curvature. And then what? I'm going to have a G I M G J K minus G I K G J M. And this is equal to zero. Excellent. Okay, now I'm going to trace this. So I'm going to hit with what? I'm going to take this equation over here and I'm going to hit everything with a G I K upper and then a G J L upper. And what we get when we do when we raise those indices, right? So I'll commute those in with the covariant derivative. I can always commute metric tensors and inverse metric tensors inside and outside of a covariant derivative. So this is going to be the M of what? This is going to be delta, delta IK. So I'm going to raise the I to a, um, let's, let's think carefully over here. So I have a delta what we have over here. So if I hit this with this, I'm going to get a what? I'm basically just going to get an n squared, right? Yep. That's going to be n squared. So it's going to be delta i, i, i. 
if we wish, and then delta jj, good. Minus what? The I, I mean, have a delta kl, and then a delta, the j is gonna kl, l, k, like that. Good. Then plus gradient k of the sexual curvature k. And then I have a GIL, so it's going to be a uh, delta L lower, and then up top is going to be a K. This is going to be a, uh, the J is, is traced on, so I'm going to have an upper L and then a lower M over here. Okay, good. And then we have a minus what? Minus a delta, the KM, and then the delta of what? And then delta of... Uh, let's see, so I have a J over here, and, a J, and J, uh, then we're going to have a what? JL. So the JL is going to give me a delta of JJ, J, J, like that. Good? Or LL, doesn't matter. Plus covariant derivative K. What? The IM, so I'm going to have a delta KM, M, K. Delta what? And then J is traced on, so I have a KL. Minus what? Minus A. IK, so that's going to be a delta II, and this is going to be a delta what? Delta um, JM, and so that's going to be a LM, like that. Great. And this is equal to zero, of course, right? So all this is equal to zero. So let's gather the terms over here, right? So what's going to happen over here, I'm going to turn all of these indices over here. So this term over here is going to sum up to what? That's going to be a delta KM. This term over here is going to be an N, and then the K is going to turn to an M. So let's write this out here. One more final step over here to do. So now the next step, just simplify all these terms. So this says that what? This says that the M covariant derivative of K, then this is going to be what? That's going to be an N, that's going to be an N, so that's going to be an N squared. And this is going to be an N, um, this is going to be just a plain old N over here because you're just doing the transpose of that matrix. So that's minus N, like that. And then over here, what do we have? Then we have gradient. Let's leave the, this over here. What this is going to sum to is this is going to sum to delta Km, right? So delta K. And then this will be of the sectional curvature. That's going to be a delta Km, right? Minus what? Minus a delta Km times N, N delta Km. Great. Plus covariant derivative L of what? Of the sectional curvature. This is going to be a uh, delta LM, delta LM. And this thing over here going to be minus N delta LM. N delta LM is equal to zero. Excellent. All right, so now this is going to be covariant derivative of K and the covariant derivative of K, N squared minus N. And then over here, I'm going to, this is going to replace the, that's going to give me one, so I'm going to replace this K with an M, so it's going to be one covariant derivative M of K. The missing over here is replaced with so n minus n covariant derivatives of m. Okay. Over here, I'm going to have one plus gradient m. Okay. And then again, minus n these things, right? Equals zero. Okay. So let's get your trap of what we have over here. So we have an n squared. I have a minus n, a minus n, and a minus n, so that's three, and I have a plus plus. So all total, what we have over here is we have covariant derivative of m sectional curvature, n squared minus three n's plus two is equal to zero. And of course, what's that invariant factor two? That's m covariant derivative of k, and then times what? Times n minus two, n minus one. So if you're in dimension one or dimension two, those in principle, those expressions could be zero, right? But if you're in dimension bigger than or equal to three, what does that force? And bigger than or equal to three forces the covariance derivative of the sectional curvature to be equal to zero. And that proves Schur's theorem. Thank you very much.